secrets of man just as we have different words in each language so to in in each system we use different words to explain the same thing for instance when we look at the indian languages if we have to greet someone bengalis use a different language kashmiri use a different language so to french german american all of them use different language to explain the same thing to express the same sentiments in the same way something which is existential is considered as essential we use different words for water to mean the same thing muslims or sufis use the word noor ilahi noor means light that which is the embodiment of light for the same expression the followers of jain they use a different word they call siddh shilapati a particular sect of christians out of that a particular group emerged they used the word jehovah and as a result jehovah witness one who witnesses the light a group of christians emerged buddhists use the word chinkun sheki for the same thing light in different languages but the importance of light remains in all the paths hindus use the word jyotir lingam jyoti means light that which emerges that which is embodiment of light born out of its own not by male female relation that is the main characteristic of noor e ilahi where does it come from it emerges out of its own jehova siddh shilapati or swayambhu all the other hindu gods are born out of parentage but shiva the embodiment of meditation is not born out of any parentage to symbolize this it has been said jesus was born out of virgin mary this has to be experienced when we enter into a male female relation we are overpowered by passion our consciousness remains at the level of the body or at the level of the mind at the level of the body is simple at the level of the mind we go on thinking how are we going to make love imagine many things we do not transcend beyond that level there is no innocence at that level we are trying to achieve something trying to achieve the bliss of this male female relation when you are beyond this to the re- in the realm of spirituality in the realm of ruh in the realm of noor in the realm of light you are beyond body and the mind at that time you are overwhelmed by the con- supreme consciousness or noor or light then you, although you are operating at the physical plane but you are not actually at the physical plane 
A simple example I can give you. When you are cooking food for your loved one or you are cooking out of extreme joy, then you are not at the physical plane. Although your hands, your mind, everything will work, but there is something higher than that which is at play. And you are in a state of trance and you are cooking your food and you do not know what it comes out and how excellent that dish comes out to be. When you are in a particular work and totally absorbed, not involved at that level, painter, musician, when they are in a state of trance and in that state whatever they do that has nothing to do with the physical. In that situation Jesus was born out of, it is symbolic that he was born out of Virgin Mary. At that time there was no passion, no desire of any kind in Mary and Joseph. But the work has to take place at the physical level. The cooking has to be done at the physical level, this fire, the pots, the utensils, everything has to be used but your consciousness is not in that level. That is when marriage attains to its fruition. One can involve in the marriage or male-female relation at that level. And that is how the great souls of light manifests. It is not born, but it manifests. When we use the word born out of its own cause, the Hindu scriptures, Krishna says, I am born out of my own yoga maya. That is my powers of yoga. I assume the human form. I follow the same rituals. As far as Shiva is concerned, there is a particular temple in Himalayas that is known as Badrinath Temple. During summer months, people are allowed to go there. About nine months, that place is covered with snow. When temple doors are closed, lamp is lit and now is time, summer is coming to an end, winter approaching. For nine months, the whole place will be covered with the snow, doors are closed and when the doors are open, there is a Shiva symbol which is known as Shiv Lingam, the symbol of creation, is formed out of its own, nobody does it. And when the doors are open, the lamp remains lit. The purpose is that when something is born out of no cause, out of its own yoga powers, the power of communion, Communion with the soul. Yoga means communion with the being, communion with the soul. Then it is the very quality of Nur Ilahi or Swayambhu or Jyotir Lingam or whatever the different religions call. I decided the topic secrets of marriage because it is the concern of all how to attain fruition in this male-female relation. We have to understand many things. Hindus consider marriage as a religious sacrament. It is proclaimed marriage is the union of two souls. This is what had been proclaimed by the religious preceptors. 
in case of muslims it is a social contract when i look all around through these religious preceptors and the people around there is no such fragrance it seems everyone has missed the essence of marriage what to talk of the union of two souls marriage has not yet attained the union of two bodies at the level of the bodies first union has to be at the level of the body and when this union deepens or attains fruition this same union paves for the union at different levels first the union has to be at the level of the body when two bodies are merged into one another and that time there is no thought or anything then it leads to the next level the union at the level of the mind at this level the couple attains to emotional maturity and in marriage the emotional maturity is most important remember there are two different individuals brought up have their own bent of mind their own emotions we have to understand each other's emotions mother understands the emotions of the children but as husband and wife we do not understand each other's emotion if something does not happen your way then that particular day it becomes difficult to enter into male female relation then it is always found that whenever someone is angry over the other over a trivial matter the first thing comes do not touch me or come close to me that's the beginning emotional maturity means we understand each other's emotions and there is no restrictions we go for the physical nudity but emotional nudity we do not understand we hide our emotions from each other the two individual individually conditioned mind begins to resonate with one another in harmony this is called emotional maturity i have explained with music if a master musician is playing a musical instrument and you place a well tuned instrument in another corner of the room that will begin to vibrate the same tune at least one of the couple should have that emotional maturity when we look into the different types of things there is a particular age particular conditionalities to obtain a driving permit or the right to vote but there isn't any such thing as far as male female relation is concerned when there is seems to a little upsurge at the physical level we want to enter into male female relation if you begin to understand your own emotional moods which is related to 
the cycle of the moon and it is because of this cycle of moon moves from 28 to 35 days which is the same thing as the menstrual period in case of females. Not only females have menstrual period but men do have the menstrual period as well. In case of females it is evident because of the physical reasons but in case of men it is not. There are three cycles, the physical cycle, the mental cycle and the emotional cycle. All these three cycles are connected with the cycle of the moon. All of a sudden, one day you feel that you are not feeling up to mark or you are, your intellectual progress is at the lowest or intellectual this happens this is known as biorhythm movement each individual is supposed to know his or her biorhythm you can start with your menstrual period and observe how does your emotions mental acumen and level of intelligence vary during that period. The same is the case of men. Long time Sufis have never initiated the person unless and until the seeker has known his own biorhythm charge. How does his level vary? which is very important. It gives emotional maturity of the highest quality. Then you can understand the emotions of the others. You are becoming a magnet and the other becomes like a piece of iron and the two attract one another and some of the magnetic quality is transferred onto the metal. At least one person has, a, has to reach to that level of emotional maturity. The two individually conditioned minds when begin to resonate with one another in harmony it is known as emotional maturity. Out of this harmony, one day you experience inner peace, oneness and harmony of a different quality. Also you may get the far away glimpse of soul when you attain to emotional maturity or to individually Conditioned minds begin to resonate with one another in harmony. This can happen with one person to start with. Then you experience the inner peace, oneness and harmony of a different quality. Also you may get the far away glimpses of soul which was so far conditioned within the finite boundaries of body, mind, intellect and thus the individual ego. That's why ego plays an important part in human life and because of this false identity we fail to progress into male-female relation and that remains a far away illusion. Marriage seeks to attain fruition at each stage. Out of this fruition, one day the fruits of freedom begin to sprout. The ultimate freedom leads 
to just freedom. This is how things do not happen, although meant for this. Somewhere there is a breakdown in understanding. This we see all around us and is the cause of misery. Swiss psychoanalyst Carl Gustav Jung said just before dying that on the basis of being a physician, I can say that all the patients who came to me after the age of 40, basically their illness was because of the lack of religion. It is quite surprising, but if somehow we can give them some kind of religion, then they will become healthy. As long as we are individual, there is no conflict we can live. But when two people start living together in a relationship, there is a clash of ego or when two people begin to relate to one another at the level of emotions, the play of ego comes in and conflict begins. If there is emotional maturity or understanding, maturity comes with an understanding. You understand the unexpressed emotions and feelings of the others. You become so sensitive that you are able to experience just as the person comes in or you feel the air, you understand the inner feelings of the person. Sometimes this instinctive, instinctive nature mothers have. The moment the child is about to come, the mother knows what to do. Sometimes she prepares a dish and when the child eats, Yes, mom, this is what I want to eat this time. How, you, how did you know that I wanted this? This is, there is an inner connectivity through which the message is communicated and you are able to read the unexpressed feelings and emotions. One can practice this. And this can happen only when you begin to understand your own emotions and biorhythm chart. Then a different kind of relation begins. Man is a universe within an outer universe. Just like the body of the universe, the human body is composed of cells. These cells are interconnected by an electromagnetic force. This force works through electrolytes present in each cell. Individual human consciousness is a byproduct of ego and mind. All the states of pain and pleasure exist because of this ego mind combination. It is because of this eternal pair of ego and mind that we have innumerable desires. Man requires tremendous energy to fulfill these desires. Unfulfilled desires cause illness and pain. This is what Carl Gustav Jung said. He was a psychoanalyst and a disciple of Sigmund Freud, but his way of research and work was totally different than that of Sigmund Freud. Man requires tremendous energy to fulfill these desires. Unfulfilled desires cause illness and pain. This requires special methods to cure illness diseases and pain. Whenever you listen to the voice of ego, 
sooner or later there will be trouble. You will fall into the trap of misery. This you have to watch. Ego always leads into misery, always unconditionally, always categorically and always absolutely. We use these terms. Unconditional, always categorically no and always absolutely no. Whenever you listen to your nature, it leads you to a well-being, contentment, a silence, and bliss. So this should be the criteria. When you listen to your nature, you will have, you will make many errors. There is no other way. You have to watch your own choice from where the voice is coming and then you have to see what happens because the fruit is the criteria. If the choice is emerging out of your nature, then the fruits will be of a different quality and nature. There will be a different kind of satiation. But if it is emerging out of ego, it will bring pain, it will bring discontentment and things like this. When you do something, watch and be alert and it leads and if it leads to misery, then you know well that it was ego that was at its play. Then next time, be alert and not to listen to that voice. If it is nature, it will lead you towards a blissful state of mind. You will become very calm and quiet. Nature is always beautiful and ego is always ugly. There is no other way but trial and error. I cannot give you a criteria so that you can judge everything you know. It is subtle and complex and all criteria fall sh short. You will have to make your own effort to judge. So whenever you do something, listen to the voice from within. Make a note of it, of where it leads. If it leads to misery, it was certainly from the ego. And once you try once or twice, even before you begin to enter into anything, you will hear the voice, you will know the difference in the two voices. This is what has been said, that when devil appeared to Jesus. It appears in such a way, it said that jump from the cliff because it is said that if the messenger of God jumps, the angels will be there to pick him up. Now, listening to this voice and the arguments, you may jump. But Jesus responded by saying, yes, I know it is written. It is written in the scriptures that if the Son of God falls from the cliff, certainly angels will lift him. Use the word, if the Son of God falls from the cliff. Fall, falling from the cliff is an accident. And jumping from the cliff is a deliberate effort. Certainly it is written, if the Son of God falls from the cliff, angels will lift him. But it is also written not to put God into unnecessary trouble. 
you know putting the hand in the fire will do. If it happens by accident, is a different kind of effect. Somehow these kind of criteria and the guidelines help to know when the message is coming from your inner self and when it is coming from people. If your love leads to misery, it is from ego. If your love leads to a blissful benediction, blessedness, it was from nature. If your friendship, even your meditation, leads you to misery, it was from ego. If it were from nature, everything would fit in, everything would become harmonious. Nature is wonderful, nature is beautiful, but you have to work out of it. And you have to know, differentiate between your essential nature that you are composed of this stuff called light, luminosity, that has capabilities to bring luminosity to any dark corner. It can illumine your emotions, it can illumine your thoughts, your feelings, or whatsoever it is. Always make a note of what you are doing and where it leads to. By and by you will become aware of that which is ego and that which is in nature, which is real and which is false. It will take time and alertness, observation and do not deceive yourself because only ego leads to misery, nothing else. Do not throw the responsibility on the others. One of the criteria of maturity is taking the responsibility of all that is happening in and around you is because of your own doing, because of your own actions. Do not throw the responsibility on others. The other is irrelevant. Your ego leads to misery. Nobody else leads you into misery. And we have been conditioned to blame others. And if you cannot blame the others, then we shout. We scream. Ego is the gate to hell and the natural, the authentic, the real that comes from your center is the door to bliss. Heaven means a state of blissfulness, harmony. Hell represents the state of misery, disharmony and things like these. You will have to find it and work it out. If you work it out diligently, soon you will be absolutely certain of which is from nature and which is from the ego. Then do not follow the ego. In fact, then you will try yourself not to be following ego, the way of ego. There will be no need to make any effort. You will be simply following the natural. The natural is divine. In nature, the supernature is hidden. If you follow the natural by and by, slowly and slowly, without even making any noise, suddenly one day, the natural will disappear and supernatural will appear. Nature leads to God because God is hidden in the nature. The creator is hidden in creation. It is the process of creativity. First the natural and then you will be 
flowing in the river of the natural and one day the river will fall into the ocean of the supernatural. According to Sufis, you attain to Fana. Then you continue to live in a state of being ocean. The moment the river water or the drop merges into the ocean, it loses its identity, but it gains a di different kind of identity. The drop had a natural form, but its form becomes magnanimous or supernatural, because ocean lends it its quality, its magnanimity, its splendor. So from nature you become natural supernatural and then you can carry you can just say and silence will be the communion no word can explain that state that you have attained 